Today, we're going to look at another flowchart example. We've looked at several before, and what we want to do is build upon the complexity and show you some different ideas. The reason for this is because a flowchart is a great way to break a complex idea down to small, simple steps so that we'll be able to program this into a computer later on. The simple steps is important because computers are essentially stupid. As you'll see today, a computer can't even easily understand the difference between equals, less than, or greater than. So what we're going to do is break that down so that a computer can understand it. That way, when we're ready to program it, we'll know how to break it down into small sections that a computer can understand step by step by step. Let's take a look at our user story. Based upon two numeric values entered by the user, the computer should let the user know if the two numbers are equal, the first is larger, or if the second number is larger. So let's take a look at how we're going to build our flowchart. As we've done with previous flowcharts, we're always going to start with the terminal start. We're building some Microsoft Word, so we're going to start with our Insert tab, choose Shapes, and choose the Terminator. Once it's in, we're going to type in Start. Next, we're going to insert two inputs. So our shape, we're going to choose a parallelogram. This is how we're going to get our data. In, we're just going to choose num1, and we'll also have a num2 as our other input. Because my next statement is going to be a decision block, I'm going to create my flow lines real quick. Notice I have a flow line already set up to go to my decision block. So I'm going to insert shapes and choose my decision diamond. Remember, our decision blocks have to ask a question that will give us a yes, no, true, false type of answer. We can't have an open-ended question. It must be very specific. So in this case, we're looking to see is num1 equal to number 2. If so, I'm going to create a flow line off to my right-hand side. That's for yes. Now you might notice I can insert a shape a little bit easier when I'm already in my format tab. So I'm going to create that flow line. And I'm going to create another input output box. With a simple statement saying that the two numbers are equal. This is for my yes. <clears throat> and I'm going to create a text box that specifies that this is for the yes, also known as the true. Once this is done, I'm going to create my flow line for if I was false. Now if this is false, I'm going to go down and flow down. I'm now going to check to see if number one is greater than number two. This is once again going to require creating me to draw another decision box. You may notice the only difference between my two decision boxes is one is checking for equality, the other is checking to see if num1 is greater than num2. I'm going to once again go off to my right hand side if this is true. I'm just going to simply copy and paste my flow lines as well as my box for saying yes. Choose another parallelogram for my output. My output specifies being num1 is greater than num2. We're looking for just a real simple output message. And then if it's not, that means num2 is greater than num1. So I'm going to copy and paste my no flow lines. In this case, if num1 is not greater than num2, I also know that num it was not equal to num1. So that means num2 is going to be the larger one. I'm going to need another output box to show this. Once again, I'm going to insert, choose my data, input output box, and specify out. One more flow line. And I'm going to create a terminator to show I'm at the end of my program. Now, I do have one small problem. I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix this real quick. And that is, if I come out here to where the two numbers are equal, 
or so my output where num1 is greater than num2, notice that my box goes out here and then doesn't go anywhere. I don't go to a terminator. We always need to make sure that we have an in and an out flow line to a box unless we're dealing with a terminal. So what we're going to do is just make a couple of small little changes. In this case, I'm going to choose to make a line which can have connectors in it. I'm going to come out from my very top flow line. I'm going to move around like such. Now I can move my connectors in that middle point you'll notice so I get a nice even connector that goes from one line into another. Okay, so this is a pretty nice and simple way to do this. Um, it does take a little bit getting used to if you're not used to drawing lines inside of Microsoft Word, but with just a couple of handles, you can resize and position, and we have those nice 90 degree lines that we like. Our next problem is how are we going to handle the num1 greater than num2? Well, we have a solution for this as well. It's a little different than what you might expect, however. We're going to once again take a flow line and draw it from our box to this flow line. Now, the problem is my flow line doesn't really connect to anything. So in a special case, we're going to come here to Insert, Shapes, and I'm going to look for a very special option called a connector. Now, Microsoft Word has this. On it is a standard flowchart shape, and it's really just a small circle and it shows where we're going to connect. So if we're coming from one flow line, we can connect to another flow line and follow that logic down. So I'm just going to take and draw this small little connector here. Come off, you'll notice if, I, if you zoom in, I didn't quite make a perfect circle, but the idea is good enough for what we're doing. All it is is it's a small circle that allows us to connect two flow lines together. Now, if num1 is greater than num2, we have our output. We come down here and we connect to this flow line, which is moving down and over here to our end, just as you would expect. We have one start up at the top. We have one end down at the bottom. The new thing that we saw today is we used two different decision statements in a row. This way we could check for equality, and we have a separate output for that or we're checking for is one number is greater than another number. We can follow through this logic and just kind of test. Let's say our first number is three and our second number is six. We'll see is number one equal to number two. Three and six are not equal, so we're gonna follow our no flow line down. Is three greater than six? No, it is not. So we're gonna follow our flow line down and see our output is num2 is greater than num1. Now let's take another example. Let's run through this one more time. Let's say we got two numbers. We're going to use two different numbers. We're in this case going to use 7 and 4. So num1 is 7. Num2 is 4. Is num1 and num2 equal? No, they're not. So we're going to flow down to our no. Is 7 greater than 4? Yes, it is. So now we're going to come off to the side and give an output at num1 is greater than num2. Once we've done that, we come out, we see our connector, we follow the flow line down, and we reach the end, and our program exits. So by using those yes, no questions, we can change the output that we've seen. Let's take a final look, start from the top. And let's say that both of our numbers are 5. We get our first num1 is equal to 5. Num2 is also equal to 5. We have our decision statement. Is num1 equal to num2? The answer is yes. So we're going to come off to the side, output the two numbers are equal, and come down. Once we come down, notice we're bypassing all of our other decisions, all of our other input and output statements, all the way down to our end. We can connect this anywhere we want to logically. The important thing is that we're bypassing blocks of our code that are not relevant based upon the decisions that were made early on. And so that's how we're going to take a relatively simple, but in some ways complex user story and break it down into small components that are very manageable 
for a computer. 